Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on survival analysis from a Bayesian perspective, and specifically a, a parametric approach to survival analysis. Alright, so for those who don't know, survival analysis is a field of statistics devoted to time to events or waiting type phenomenon, uh, but typically complicated by having censored data. So what do we mean by censored data? Censored data means that you know that an observation falls in some interval, let's say A to B, but it is unknown where in that interval it lies. There are three specific examples or types of censoring. Right censoring is when you know that the observation has lasted at least up to time point A, but you don't know how far past time point A that, a, that observation lasted. So we can write this as uh, being centered into the interval A to infinity. The opposite is having left centering, so you know that the uh, event that you're waiting for happened before some time B, but you don't know when before time B. Also, you could have interval centering, where you know that the observation occurred between some time points A and B, but you don't know where between those two time points. All right, so let's talk about a specific example. Here we're going to talk about uh, a study that looked at uh, outpatient appointment waiting times in the UK. So the idea here is that an individual had a referral from their primary care physician uh, to some type of treatment uh, that would be an outpatient treatment, so not one where you'd have to get checked in the hospital. And the question is, how long did it take for the individual to actually be seen uh, uh, for that appointment? So the idea here is that we randomly sample individuals that had referrals, and we record when they actually had their appointment, but because we wanted timeliness in the study, we decided to end the study after six weeks. So we only collected data for the six weeks. So that means that individuals in the study could fall into two different types. The first type of individual had their appointment in that first six weeks, and so we actually know their true waiting time. But another set of individuals had their appointment after that six weeks, and so the only thing that we know is that their appointment time is greater than six weeks, not months. I will change that. Right, so the question is, how do we deal with this type of data? Certainly a naive analysis would say, well, forget these individuals here, um, but that would give us a biased estimate for the true, let's say, mean waiting time of all individuals because we won't be including these individuals that had high waiting time. All right, so what do we do? All right, so we're going to go ahead and introduce immediately a parametric model. At the very end of the mini lecture, I will describe sort of the general approach for any model that you want to choose. Um, we're going to use the standard or the first step approach for a waiting time and model it as an exponential distribution with some parameter theta. So each individual has an uh, exponential waiting time until they get uh, seen by their appointment and we assume that all individuals are independent. Alright, so we're going to introduce some notation here. The notation is OBS and MISS. OBS are for those individuals we actually observed the waiting time and MISS for those individuals we didn't observe the waiting time. In this specific example, we know that those who we missed had waiting times that were greater than six weeks, but we don't know how far beyond six weeks it was. All right, so we can go ahead and write down the joint distribution over all of our individuals, and we split those up into two categories, those who were actually observed, and so this is just the density of the exponential distribution, and those who were not observed. Right, so all we know about these individuals is that their waiting time, yi, was greater than six weeks. And it turns out that their contribution to the model here is just the probability of being greater than six. And that's this right here. So one minus the probability of being under six. This is the cumulative distribution function for an exponential distribution. All right, so that's the model. And our goal here is to find the posterior distribution for theta. The posterior distribution is not in closed form due to this complication right here. Um, but here's the idea. The idea is that we're going to augment the missing data with their true values. And we're going to do it through uh, an MCMC chain or a Gibbs sampler. All right, so the first idea here is that let's assume that we use the conjugate prior. This is not necessarily important, but for simplicity, we'll do it. Um, so we assume the conjugate of prior gamma AB, and then if we had the complete data, so if there was no missing data, then the posterior would be simple. The posterior would just be another gamma distribution because this is the conjugate prior. All right, but we don't have that information. 
And so we need to do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to augment the data with the missing data, the actual waiting times, um, and perform this in a Gibbs sampler. So here's the idea. We're going to the first step. We're going to condition on all the actual data. Right? So this is the waiting times for all individuals. Of course, we don't know this. And we're going to sample theta given y, where we've imputed some values for the missing data. Right? In the second step here is when we're going to actually impute those missing data values. So now we have a value for theta in our Gibbs sampler. And for all the data that are missing, we're going to sample them. And we're going to sample from them from this distribution, an exponential distribution with parameter theta, but truncated to be greater than 6. Right? We know that that observation for all the missing data had to be greater than 6, and so we're going to draw from an exponential distribution with parameter theta, conditional on the fact that the actual observed waiting time is greater than 6. If we alternate back and forth, we create a Gibbs sampler here, where the samples converge to this distribution. So P, the joint distribution of the parameter that we're interested in, and the actual waiting times from missing data, conditional on the observed data that we actually have. And this really includes the uh, cut time of six weeks for the data that we didn't observe. And so importantly, what we're interested in is the marginal distribution for this uh, parameter theta. <clears throat> it turns out that sampling from this distribution right here is pretty trivial due to the memoryless property of the exponential distribution. So all we have to do is sample a value from an exponential theta that's untruncated and add 6 to it, and we have a sample from this truncated exponential. All right, so here's the code to do it. Uh, this is a, a data set of the actual waiting times, and now we're going to go ahead and censor it. So we're going to say that the data is missing for any waiting time that's greater than 6. And now our data here, at this point, is just going to be uh, 6 for everybody who is missing and whatever the true value was for everybody else. Here we're going to assume a proper prior, just so that we know the posterior is proper, uh, but it's going to be fairly diffuse here with hyperparameter values of 1 and 1. Alright, so then we're going to go ahead and run the MCMC and it just alternates between sampling the theta given all the data y and imputing data for the missing values using again this memoryless property of the exponential distribution trick to get a truncated exponential. Alright, so we can look at the posterior distribution for 1 over theta which is the actual mean waiting time in weeks. So that mean waiting time is somewhere around 3. Here we're 95% credible interval is 2.6 to 3.8. Okay, so that was a specific example. I want to talk just a bit more generally about uh, using this data augmentation MCMC approach for sensor data. And so we're going to assume whatever functional form you want, whatever parametric form you want for the distribution for an individual waiting time conditional on, on some parameters theta. And just like before, OBS are going to be the completely observed data and MIS are going to be the sensor data. And now we're going to make it more generic where we're going to have censored interval for observation i AI to BI, where we're going to allow AI to be zero and BI to be infinity if the interv if the observation happens to be uh, left or right centered or interval centered, right? So we're covering all the bases here. And now again, what we're interested in is the uh, marginal posterior for the parameter given the observed data, uh, as well as the censored interval for all the missing data. And we're going to essentially, the idea is here, we're going to integrate out the missing data, but we're going to do it through the MCMC uh, algorithm. And so again, what we're going to do is based on all the data. So this is the concatenation of the missing data and the observed data. So now we have complete data. And we're going to use, we're going to sample from the conditional posterior for theta given the complete data. Right? This may be a Gibbs step like it was in this example, or it might be a metropolis hastings step. Um, but some way of sampling from that conditional distribution. And now, just like before, for all the missing observations, we're going to sample conditional on that value for theta that we just obtained, and whatever truncation interval is specific to that observation i. 
So unlike the example that was provided here, we do not need to have the same uh, truncation interval for all individuals. We just need to make sure that when we're sampling the missing data for that individual, we use the correct interval. All right, so, right, so this defines uh, a data augmentation. The augmentation is because we're augmenting the data right here with actual values for the missing data. And these two steps together are a Gibbs sampler or perhaps a metropolis width in Gibbs. Uh, typically, this distribution right here, this truncated distribution, can be uh, sampled using the inverse CDF method uh, that was introduced before. Okay, so in summary, the uh, dealing with censored data ends up being very trivial from a Bayesian perspective as long as you're willing to assume a parametric form for the true waiting times. It doesn't matter what that form is, but as long as you can sample from it, uh, then, then it's no problem. Um, in contrast, the many approaches, non-Bayesian approaches, um, try to not make this assumption, uh, and therefore they are semi-parametric and non-parametric, so we have not covered that here. Um, but nonetheless, we've tried to show here that censoring, if you assume a parametric form, is pretty trivial from a Bayesian perspective. Thank you.